Alright, welcome back to another video boys. This one's literally just gonna be a um, video on price cycle because <clears throat> I know a lot of you are all now kind of getting to grips with all your basic stuff and you're obviously looking for that extra bit of information that can dramatically change your you know your trading style. Um, but before we get into that I want to quickly just show you guys uh, my website that I just released. You can go ahead and join the Discord. It's got all the information you need to know about the course and stuff. Um, so it's definitely worth having a quick look at that. Um, it's nothing crazy. I mean, I just wanted to get it over and done with because I used to have one, but I got it taken down. Um, there's a bit of information you can obviously read, look at some of the charts that uh, I've done over the past few months. Uh, we've got a mentorship. Um, I will be adding a list to the mentorship. Um, but here's the free Discord, which you can go ahead and click on. And it should take you straight to the Discord. And if it doesn't, then just message me on Instagram like that. So I'll get that changed um, ASAP, as you can see here. Everyone's posting the free channels. Everyone's still posting their trades. Um, so it's a good way to get started out. Um, it's definitely worth investing yourself into a mentor like myself. But with that being said, let's get straight into the video. So with price action, uh, not price action, price cycle, sorry. Um, we have an algorithm, right? So the banks do whatever they want to do on a daily basis and it'll go ahead and restart every single day in a seeding session. I'll go over the session timings with you in a minute. Just waiting for this to load because I've come from a MacBook, so it all has a bit of a delay. Um, so, where are we? <coughs> That's a trade right now, I mean. Uh, this good is AMD cycle. Um, I will probably do a video on that soon. Um, but for now, let's go over price cycle. So, just for the video, I'm going to just go over the most common setup you'll see um like concept module because obviously you can get loads of different concepts um i'll be going into a bit more in depth um in a new course that's being released in the next month um so if you want to get that course then go ahead and get the courses available now which is a lot cheaper than what this one will be and you'll get the new one for free um when it comes out or if you don't want a course continue to watch youtube videos and you know question why question why things aren't really working so Sydney session go ahead and write this down if you haven't got a book then screenshot we've got 10 p.m. to midnight which is Sydney session that's when the algorithm is reset and that's why market kind of does a bit weird stuff Asia we've got 12 p.m. to 6 a.m. and then we have Frankfurt from around quarter past six to around half seven uh, and then we've got London from eight o'clock to twelve o'clock and then we've got New York from twelve o'clock to I've got here four o'clock just because I stopped trading I don't trade after four o'clock um, New York session is actually two o'clock or one o'clock a lot of people kind of make up their own times but you've obviously got the New York crossover um, which I'll go into detail in a minute so let's just start off with the morning we've had Sydney session last night this wasn't last night but let's talk as if this was last night we've had Sydney session right so once we've had Sydney session we have a lot of liquidity above and below that's one thing you need to know is a below and above Sydney session, we get a lot of liquidity that will be taken out no matter what. 
So we've had uh, Asia open. We've had Asia open and we've pushed down into a demand zone. Once we push into a demand zone, it's always going to buy into a supply or demand zone. Um, and it will 100%, as soon as Asia, as soon as Asia opens, we will see the market push down or push up into a supply or demand, um, taking liquidity from Sydney. So we've taken liquidity from beneath Sydney session and we've pushed into a demand. We've then seen the market pull back up, taking liquidity above Sydney, pushing into the supply zone. I've still got a book nose, I'm still a bit coldy, so that's probably why I sound a bit different. <coughs> And then just from simple price action, we've had liquidity stay, well no, we've had price action stay within the range, so we've not broken to the downside, we've just taken liquidity from above, which is why we wicked above the previous high, we didn't close above, so that's just a liquidity grab, hence why the market then sold off to the downside, we've had market pull back up, we've stayed within the range so this high to this low that's our range we've stayed within it we've wicked just above to get the liquidity that's what we want in order to sell market sold down frankfurt has opened we've then continued down into demand zone which is where we would be looking for buyers because we're in a buy market right now we've not you know continued to break down into lows we've you know continued on we're respecting the structure and then London's kicked in at eight o'clock, and then bang on eight o'clock, no matter what day, eight o'clock, bang on in the morning, you'll see a massive spike. Um, and usually, you know, London session will follow that direction for the entirety. Um, and then at 12 o'clock, we see London, New York crossover, and here we can expect to see the market to retrace. So, the market will retrace itself and it will kind of manipulate people so for instance we've got you know people buying here we've got people buying here we've got people buying here market will then reverse taking these buyers out in inducing people to start selling while taking out all of these people that are buying still and then when new york kicks in at two o'clock like i said down here that was a bit of a shit one two o'clock We've had New York push in, push in, open, sorry. We've had New York open, and then markets continue back in the same direction. So, New York, London crossover, you will see sometimes market manipulate people to buy and sell, or, you know, take loads of liquidity in order to continue pushing on for that direction and obviously we could you know we can determine whether or not it's going to continue because obviously we've broken the external range high so we've broken structure we've you know changed character we're continuing on to the upside and that's why we pulled back we didn't break structure here did we this is just a liquidity grab you know price pushed up this is our structural high, market's pulled back, taken liquidity, pulled back up, broken structure, pulled back, entered into our, entered into a demand zone. We could have bought there to then buy up to wherever price went up to. Obviously we had a massive spike up here, so that could have been quite a rewarding trade. Um, but that's basically it. That's one of the concepts that you can expect to see quite often. That's the most frequent setup I'll see um, when it comes to price cycle. Seeing Asia take the highs and lows at the start. Um, so if you're watching this from America and obviously Asia sessions a bit more, you know, kind of a bit easier for you to trade because of your time differences in London. Um, then I'd recommend trading Asia because as soon as it opens, the market's going to push up to supply demand and then sell down or buy up to the next point of interest, taking liquidity from either side. Um, and then London is pretty easy. We'll always see a spike at 8 o'clock. So as long as you're on the markets between half 7 and half 8, uh, all you got to do is literally just watch your direction. So I've got a demand down here. If I then just quickly jump down to the one minute and show you guys the example. So 
So yesterday, London session, you can see market pushed into the demand, taking liquidity from this low. We've pushed up. Where's my? Pushed up. We took liquidity from this low. We took this high. Change of character. We've pushed up because we've had a large break. We've only pulled back down to about 50%, and on the seconds we have um, demand. So that would have been our entry. Um, so we could have bought there and had our stops just below. Or just to be safe, because we trade on the one minute, we could have just had stops beneath previous low, um, just in case price did want to pull back and kind of, you know, mitigate all the block down here, or the IFC candle, and then we would have been targeting previous daily high, which is obviously up here. So that was that take profit was hit with no problem at all. Um, but if we were then looking on the one hour. We would have then been able to look at higher time frame bias, which means we could have potentially looked for buyers up to this line, which would have resulted in two and a half percent. No, that's the wrong trade. Could have resulted in twenty-five and a half percent. Um. So yeah, I mean, the price cycle is hard, and it will take a while to get used to. Um, but as long as you're every single day, you're just marking up your highs and lows, um, your sessions. I mean, sorry, and then just kind of looking at how price moves around and fluctuates between different sessions, you'll kind of come to grips and understand and program it in your head what to be looking for, especially with London session. I'm going to do a video on London session soon. Just because it, you know, once you understand it, it's basically a cheat sheet, and it's you know, I only trade in London sessions, so that's where I make make all of my money. So yeah, hope this video was semi um, helpful. Don't forget to join the Discord, join the free group. Um, send me any messages you have regarding trading. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it as that, and I'll see you in the next one.